A garden is a form of art that is related to nature as well as culture. One aspect of their perpetual appeal to people is that art and science, mind and nature, finally intersect in a garden. A Chinese garden is a cosmic diagram revealing a profound view of the world. It is nature in a nutshell that enables one to feel the charm of nature, such as mountains, forests and springs, without going out of the bustling city. Many world philosophies or religions regard the planet Earth as a garden and Chinese people believe that there is heaven above, there is Su Hang below. Su represents Saju and Hang for Hangzhou, two historic Chinese cities with classical gardens. There are three types of Chinese gardens, imperial, private, and religious. This video will try to focus on Suju's residential private gardens because Suju has the largest number of private gardens, the most beautiful in style and the highest in artistic and construction quality. Suju had about 270 private gardens of various sizes in the Ming Dynasty, over 60 are preserved, 19 are open to the public today, and 9 are on UNESCO's World Heritage List. Due to its warm southern climate and favorable natural conditions for growing lush green woods, Suju is a place where one can enjoy landscapes without going outside the city and live in busy streets with the sights of forests and tastes of spring water. Suju thus was praised as a city of gardens and paradise on earth. In imperial China, retired officials, literati, and wealthy merchants would like to settle in Suju resulting in its prolific number of outstanding talents and renowned celebrities. All the arts come together in the garden. Not only is it the nicest place in which to meet and paint or write poetry, but it also needs the eye of a painter both to create and appreciate it. As you walk around you will also see many poems that have been engraved on stone tablets and let into the walls. Records of a pleasant day spent there by someone, perhaps a hundred years ago or more who enjoyed just the same pavilions, scents and shadows as still are there today. Private Chinese gardens for traditional Chinese scholars are somewhat of an expansion of personal desires. It is not only a place to live and meet the needs of the daily routine but to meet the psychological needs of the owners of this park. Gardens carry personal ideas of lifestyle and way of interconnecting with society, nature, history and culture. In this way, a garden in China gradually acquires an extra dimension through time, for in an old and much-loved garden you feel close to the people who have known it in the past. The basic of traditional Chinese garden as technique is based on traditional Chinese philosophy like Confucianism, Buddhism, but Taoism give more influence about aesthetics in traditional Chinese garden. Whereas Chinese people have always believed that all natural phenomena were caused by the fluctuations in the cosmic balance of yin and yang. In Chinese philosophy, yin-yang balance and harmony is a fundamental concept applied to both nature and human affairs. Yin-yang literally means shade and light, with the word yin derived from the word for moon and yang for sun. To Taoism, the mountain here represents the masculine yang, upright, bright, hard and bony. By contrast, water in its yin aspects is receptive, soft, wet, and dark. The pair takes on further meaning when we remember the ancient legend that rivers are the arteries of the Earth's body, while mountains are its skeleton. To Confucians, however, the yin-yang relationship of mountains and water is reversed. Water is regarded as the active yang principle expressing itself in swiftly moving torrents while mountains as the passive and reflective yin principle because they remain motionless and fixed. In Chinese gardens, the concept of Tao is symbolized by placing huge standing rocks in a pond or courtyard because rocks are not only representations of the Tao, but also part of the web of life subject to the inevitable process of decay in time. Whereas the good rocks must have three characterized to use in garden design. First have enough holes in different directions and have heavy look. The second is shown the basic structure of the rock with rough texture. And third should be connected by inner space that all to increase viewer inspiration. Therefore, the design of a Chinese garden guided by the philosophical ideas of Taoism. 
Confucianism, and to a lesser extent, Buddhism, is to promote the positive spirit and eschew the negative one. Furthermore, traditional Chinese philosophers and scientists have been enjoying living in nature. From the Taoist point of view, you must have sufficient strength of qi and be able to maintain a balance between yourself and nature or the environment. Thus, you will find your own way and your own question, which is what defines the Tao. Therefore, the Chinese traditional religions were among the reasons for building gardens for seclusion and self-search by building a garden that resembles the natural environment in the mountains. For example, one of the most important philosophers and poets, Tao Yuan Main, who set the most important standards for translating and transforming human willing for freedom in garden design, which that true freedom is the balance between your willings and limitations. Another example is the story of the seven sages in the bamboo grove, where seven scientists lived in the bamboo grove and enjoyed their time with listening to music and reading articles in a healthy natural environment of the bamboo forest. It is an example of obtaining freedom by going to nature. This logic is one of the standards of building classic gardens Chinese to create an environment similar to nature. So, historically in China, mountains were viewed as connections between heaven and earth, and water as a reflection of the vast emptiness of the universe. As such, mountains and water are two fundamental elements in Chinese landscape architecture, as Confucius contended. The wise find pleasure in water, the virtuous find pleasure in hills. Living close to mountains and water was Chinese people's ideal since antiquity. However, a hermit lifestyle might not suit everyone. Thus, they created gardens with rocks and water within the confines of their private homes to be close to nature. To understand traditional Chinese, garden must try to read it like article or poems. By this way, it will be easier to understand traditional Chinese garden so, Chinese gardens have a very strong relationship with the Chinese language because the language logic of Chinese has a huge difference from other languages, especially Europe and Arab languages. So, it is important to understand and analyze gardens through a literary type perspective. Especially since the 17th century, text has abounded in Chinese gardens, Names are inscribed on buildings, bridges, and rocks. Poetic couplets adorn doorways and columns. Collectively, the writings typically speak of the garden owner's personal interests, character, and values. For example, a high-minded government official might fill a garden with names inspired by the Confucian classics, the philosophical texts that undergirded imperial China system of governance. A literature lover, meanwhile, might draw from the works of a writer whose spirit he particularly admired. Poetry had a great influence on traditional Chinese gardens. A group of scholars and educated people gathered in Lanting Pavilion during their journey to the mountain for rest. There was clean, not fast-running water, around which they gathered to drink wine, where the cup was placed in the water, and when it stopped in front of someone, that person had to say new poetry or drink that cup of wine. So, a pavilion in the garden is a good place for poets and scholars to gather, not just to celebrate, but to write poetry. Thus, it became one of the main goals and standards of it, to obtain a similar environment from nature through private gardens and creating a pavilion for gathering and writing poetry. The literary garden became not only for the sake of visible material elements, but for the gathering of scholars in parties to obtain a high level of poetry writing. When designing a Chinese garden, Feng Shui had often been applied. Feng Shui, which literally means wind and water, 
is Chinese cosmology for determining whether the potential site would bring health, wealth, or misfortune to the occupants. When designing Chinese gardens, they start with poems that express a kind of space or express a special idea that is intended to be translated through the construction of the garden. Then he begins the process of traditional Chinese painting of that idea through a painting that gives an impression and a visualization of what will appear in the garden, which is similar to what is happening at the present time. So, poetry gives you the basic atmosphere in which it is drawn and thus translates the desires of the garden owner into reality. Therefore, they must have an idea and visualize the atmosphere before they start designing the garden. So, there is a strong similarity between Chinese literature and traditional Chinese gardens and paintings. Chinese garden designers intended to recreate the effect of totality of nature in a generally small space of a private garden to represent nature's infinite change in mystery and to provide seclusion. There were no planning guidelines for Chinese gardens. Organic, spontaneous, and asymmetrical were the main characteristics. In its overall layout, the garden designers paid special attention to the terrain, site, and views. The Chinese word for landscape is Shan Shui, which literally means mountains and water, because Chinese people have observed that where there are mountains, there is bound to be water in the same place. As such, rocks and water constitute the most basic Chinese garden elements, followed by trees, flowers and herbs, walls, gates and windows, pavilions and pagodas, winding corridors, zigzag bridges, footpaths, and so on. Each element has its metaphor with layers of meanings. Rocks come from mountains, and mountains symbolize eternity. Chinese people love rocks by placing them in their gardens to gain immortality. Opening on all sides, rocks allow the viewers to see things behind, thus suggesting insight and wisdom. The heart of a Chinese garden is water along with rocks. They form a unity between dynamic and static and horizontal and vertical elements, representing yin-yang in perfect harmony. The wall plays the most critical role in a Chinese garden, for it is not only the most common device for separating different areas, but also provides quietness and seclusion, serving as a backdrop for the vibrating shadows of bamboos or plum trees. As the sun shifts, different patterns are cast on the wall, changing its perception of depth and solidity. These walls are a suggestion of infinity. A moon gate is a common shape to denote perfection since a circle focuses the eyes like the lens on a camera to intensify and concentrate all that is revealed behind. In addition to moon gates, the holes in garden walls are found in a variety of shapes and metaphors, of which the most common are in the forms of flowers, petals, leaves, fans, shells, gourds, or vases. The pavilion is the focal point of a classical Chinese garden and a delightful resting place where visitors can sit for a quiet talk or contemplation. The roofed and open-sided gallery corridors wind up and down the site, connecting pavilions and gateways, at the same time dividing up the space like a screen. They unite the garden as a whole and serve as a frame for viewing the garden and as a sheltered walkway. Ancient Chinese people believe that all evil spirit travels in straight lines. To prevent this, they built garden bridges in zigzag shapes. 
The paths made of stone, brick, or pebble mosaic would have a variety of patterns and themes to harmonize the different occasions on a garden walk. Libraries and study rooms were an integral part of nearly all classical Chinese gardens. Their owner's time was often spent practicing calligraphy and writing poetry, often in the company of family or friends. Such rooms were usually secluded and surrounded by private courtyard gardens to protect the readers and give them a pleasant view to look out.